Today we're going to discuss the top 5 reasons driving for Lyft is better than Uber in 2024. So around this time last year, I actually posted a video about why I preferred Uber over Lyft in 2023. Now this year, in 2024, basically all bonuses have dried up, so I'm multi-platforming. I'm driving for both Lyft and Uber, and I'm seeing the differences between the two in real time. And this is the first year that I've multi-platformed, driving for both at the same time, in about eight years. It's because there's no bonuses. In past years, when bonuses were offered, I would try to attain those bonuses. But because those bonuses are not being offered, it makes sense to drive for both, maximize the amount of rides I'm giving, and also maximize the amount I can possibly earn by looking at fares on both. Now, the first reason that driving for Lyft in 2024 is better than Uber is there is no trip radar chaos on Lyft. Trip radar has gotten completely out of hand. It seems that the majority of trips are going on trip radar now. A lot of drivers are seeing those upfront fares and declining those rides, and then those rides, those requests go to trip radar, and trip radar is chaotic. It's going off constantly. There's no way to turn it off. You get those notifications all the time, and Lyft has something similar to trip radar where you can see that rides are being offered, that they're available but there's no notifications like there are with Uber. You don't get constantly bothered with those notifications like you do with Trip Radar. Trip Radar is the main reason that I've almost completely stopped driving for Uber and have been primarily driving with Lyft. The second reason I prefer Lyft, the upfront fares on Lyft are much better than the upfront fares on Uber. Yes, overall Lyft is a lot less busy than Uber. I get a lot more requests on Uber than I do on Lyft but those requests on Lyft are much better than the ones on Uber. I also see a lot more per ride bonuses on Lyft than Uber. I almost never see surge on Uber anymore. The upfront fares on some of the longer rides on Lyft are still ridiculous. They don't pay well enough at all, but that's the same with Uber. Uber's worse too. Uber on the shorter rides will not pay good upfront fares for a lot of the rides. With Lyft, I've found that mid to shorter rides typically meet my requirement, which is paying at least $1 per mile for the entirety, both pickup and drop off. And I don't see that consistently with Uber at all anymore. They're not paying for pickup distance really at all. All right, the third reason Lyft is better than Uber. The upfront fare information, once you accept the request, is always available to you. Once you accept the request, if you slide up the bottom bar, you can still see the upfront fare amount, how much you're going to get paid, and you can also see the drop-off location address. Once you accept the request on Uber, all that upfront information disappears. You don't know the upfront fare anymore, and you also don't know the destination address. This is just great information to always have in case you accidentally accept the request, you didn't see the upfront fare clearly, you can look at that. You didn't know the destination address, you can look at that. This does increase the possibility of drivers canceling on Lyft, but I appreciate that they offer this information to us throughout the entirety. All right, in reason number four, and honestly, when Lyft announced this, I thought it was just corporate BS, but it's the 70% earnings guarantee. For the most part, from week to week, I am earning over 70% on my rides, but there have been weeks where I've earned 67, 68%, and I have gotten those 70% guarantee bonuses. For me, it's been anywhere from 10 to $20 on the weeks where I haven't earned 70%, but I do appreciate that they're offering this guarantee, and it's some bonus cash that I wasn't expecting from week to week. Also, another way to guarantee earnings is to use the Solo app. They offer earnings guarantees on their app. It's also great for managing your rideshare business and comparing yourself to other drivers in your market and seeing how much you can possibly make. And our referral link will be in the description. All right, and reason number five why I prefer Lyft over Uber is the stay within area filter. The stay within area filter is my favorite filter in my 10 years of driving rideshare. And in my opinion, the best way to utilize the stay within area filter is to use it near downtown areas during peak demand times. Downtown areas during peak times are where you're gonna see the most per ride bonuses offered. And if you can camp out near downtown areas with the stay within area filter and just set it to that five mile minimum radius, you can drive a lot more efficiently. You can make a lot more per ride and you're driving a lot less miles for those rides. All right, so those are my five main reasons. I do have a couple of honor will mention reasons. Um, one is on Lyft, you have 15 seconds to accept the request. On Uber, it's only 10 seconds. And with upfront fares, it's nice to be able to analyze that information with a little added time. I've seen thousands of these upfront fare screens now, so I know what to look for, but there are times where you will see that upfront fare and you'll want to analyze that data a little bit more thoroughly. And on Uber with only 10 seconds, the times where I need to analyze that data a little bit more, I often find that that trip request just expires. On Lyft, that extra five seconds does help, especially on those rides where you need to analyze a little bit more. 
And another honorable mention reason is on Lyft for cancellations. To receive a cancellation fee, you only have to wait five minutes. On Uber, you have to wait a total of seven minutes. Now on Lyft, you're only actually paid for time and distance to the pickup location for your cancellation fee. So a lot of those cancellation fees are like $2. On Uber, I believe the cancellation fee is something like $4.25 or $4.50 minimum. So of course, I prefer the higher dollar amount on Uber, but I do prefer the less wait time on Lyft. All right, so that's why I prefer driving for Lyft over Uber in 2024. Again, bonuses have disappeared. I'm multi-platforming again. And I've just found out that by driving for both simultaneously, I much prefer Lyft. It's less chaotic, it's a smoother experience, and also those upfront fares are just better. I'm using Uber very seldomly now. The only times I'm using it are during slower times times where maybe I'm out in a rural area and requests aren't as prevalent. Also, I will use both Uber and Lyft when I wanna end my day, when I wanna head home. I will go into destination mode on both Uber and Lyft. Although on Uber with Trip Radar, they'll send you Trip Radar requests that are outside of your destination. I have no idea why they do this. They need to get rid of this. So there are times where I will just turn Uber off because of Trip Radar. But what about all of you? Do you prefer Lyft over Uber like I do? Have you started to multi-platform again like I have in 2024? If you yet to download the solo app again our referral link is in the description we also have a free weekly newsletter and the link to sign up for that is in the description as well and if you've yet to watch my previous video on my lifetime stats after driving 10 years for both uber and lyft be sure to check that out thanks again for watching and drive safe thanks